It's been a remarkable journey as 30 matches, 32 teams and 64 players have battled their way down to just two teams, four players and one match to decide the destiny of the 888.com World Cup of Pool. The final is about to be played out. The Netherlands have emerged from a classic all-European semi-final to take on the greatest pool-playing nation. Anyone's guess who's going to prevail. A very impressive start. That's a good stepping stone. Holland well into this match already. Firmly in control now. Goes for the carom. Oh no, the cue ball gets kicked in. Finland scratched, the Dutch did the rest. Look how far he has to jump. What more can you say? You hear the applause right there. Nicely done. A delicate touch. Another nine ball finds darkness. It's all sweetness and light for the Dutch. Oh! Unabashed Dutch delight. The Finns, they are finished. The Philippines are attempting to lift their third World Cup. A remarkable achievement and one achieved by no other nation. But they found the going pretty tough in the semis. The fast track to the finish line in that wrap. Philippines about to put a stranglehold on this match. We have yet to see one of these massive miracle comebacks. Is this the time? The pool gods are shining down onto Chinese Taipei. That's the one ball, but he scratches. You're gonna hear the roar all the way back to Manila. It's there and they're there. A 9-7 winner over Chinese Taipei. The quarterfinals produced their own level of drama. For the Dutch, it came in the form of a very spirited Japanese side. They then faced Finland, who looked so dominant against the England B side. The Philippines were in commanding form for their clash with Hungary, but faced an informed Chinese Taipei in the semis. It's been an incredible journey for both teams. It's been a nice ride and, uh, you know, maybe we would have lost to Scotland in the first round. We would have been watching uh, on the couch at home on Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, we're on a roll this year and uh, we're doing really well. We're playing solid pool and uh, we want to go all the way. It's less pressure here in London, not like if you're uh, in Manila. I mean, too much, I mean, the crowds, I mean, the intense. So, uh, we have a, they have a different in Philippines and London. I mean here, they have a pressure, but not kind of, uh, kind of uh, intense. Against Japan, that was uh, unbelievable. And here uh, we are playing the semi-final, winning 9-4, uh, just cruising. It's pre it's very nice to uh, to not have a trailer because if we are in the final, we want to be relaxed and not like pumped up from the last match. Well, uh, we're trying to relax, you know, think about what we do, what we right, you know. So now I feel uh, still I feel still nervous. But I'm, I just relax, relax for a few hours. The Philippines, of course, is uh, just an amazing group of uh, players. I mean, any duo you get from there, you're not happy to draw them. That's pretty much the bottom line. Uh, they're very strong individuals. The times of uh, only Bustamante and, uh, and Efren, uh, those days are a little bit over. Well, for me, you know, this, ga this game is, you know, I mean, every match is going to be a tough match. Then um, we'll try our best. I think this year we've been on a good streak. Uh, Nick's won a Euro Tour, I've won a Euro Tour, Nick was number one on the European ranking, now I'm number one on the ranking, so it's like, you know, if we stick together we can win this thing and show that we're not only singles players, but uh, the quality can also shine through in the doubles. The ultimate test for the Dutch as they prepare to take on the greatest pool playing nation in the world. The Dutch won the lag, which has proved so vital in so many of these World Cup matches. 
but a dry break put pay to that advantage as the Philippines drew first blood by taking the opening rack. <laughs> Commentary comes from Jim White and Phil Yates. And nicely on the two. He had a chance to watch what Holland did. And he went with a more conventional break, Phil. Flush on the one, pulling the cue ball straight back. And the way these balls are set up, I think we'd be astounded if it wasn't 2 0 in double quick time. For the first year, the World Cup of Pool comes to the York Hall, East End of London. Look at that crowd. So used to hosting Moscone Cups over the years. It's become a venue synonymous with big time pool. And Jim, is this an omen? The inaugural year of this tournament was 2006. It was played in Britain, in Newport in Wales. And the winners, yes, you've guessed it, the Philippines. Efren Reyes and Francisco Bustamante. Well, this time it's Dennis Orcolio's turn to play a very weak positional shot. He's left his partner a lot to do on this, and this should have been straightforward. Disaster averted. Well, so far, Holland's contribution to the match, a dry break. The second rack, exactly the same as the first dominated by the Filipinos. I hope the Dutch chairs are comfy because they might be sitting there for quite some time. Welcome back to the final of the World Cup of Pool. As many expected, the Philippines made an impressive start, taking the opening two racks. But the break in the third was pretty inconclusive. In the safety play that followed, it was the Philippines who made the first mistake, allowing the Dutch back to the table to take their first rack. This is now the fourth. Rack number four. The opposite side of the table the Philippines broke from. And using the cut break, getting the one in. It's a legal break and a good one, but just enough room for the cue ball to get through to the two. And if you're just joining us, just to let you know about the rules for the break, three balls have to pass the head string. And every ball that is pocketed counts as a ball having passed the head string. So in total three, in this case two pass the head string, the one ball pocketed for a total of three. That actually was nice position on the two after the break. That was ideal. The nine tracking up table. But the problem ball is the next one to come, the three onto the four. And it's gonna have to be a combination, I think, 
four on to seven. He's trying to pull over to the other side. Not a very good shot from Nick Vandenberg there. Well, I think he should have played for the combination, Phil. That would have been easy. Yes, because the positional considerations from the combination wouldn't have been too complex because the orange five ball is in mid-table. Oh, Niels is really eyeing this up. Extension call. Yeah, calling for the extension. And he wants to take that four ball right down the center of the table and try and get that cue ball behind cover. Well, he's just played object ball safety. I thought he might try and hold the cue ball behind the eight. But that's a let off. The Philippines will be very happy to get back to the table because Holland with a very clear cut chance in this one. Just a very lax positional effort. You know, since the very outset of the event, the table has been very slick and we've seen the cue ball lost on numerous occasions. We've seen more mistakes from the positional side than any other. Tension cold. You know, that sort of excuse held early on, but not now that we're in day six and both sides that are here have had plenty of table time with which to experience and acclimatize themselves. That's ball in hand. Ball in hand. Well, you see snooker players miss the object ball when they're playing a thin safety quite often because the penalty is only four points. But the penalty in pool is ball in hand, which is much more excessive. On two fronts, actually, Phil. The rack that you might have just given away and the ones that may follow. In snooker, it's almost worth giving four, eight, maybe even 12 penalty points away to get the safety right. But in pool, you have to do it first time. If you don't, penalty paid, lights out. here is that you don't have to do much with the cue ball to get on the next ball but thank goodness for Holland that they didn't have to be because he's left him right over top the eight queuing at the seven but the eight's right there Got to be a little careful here. If he decides to float this in, he doesn't want to overcut this. There it is, right down the side rail. Holland back on level terms. They made a shaky start. Now they're feeling good. In the fifth, it was a break and run out that saw the Dutch take the lead. But in the sixth, the break looked good. However, a scratch off the three saw the Philippines with ball in hand and a pretty open table back to level terms.
In the seventh, the break looked to have put the Philippines in a strong position, but the miss on the one allowed the Dutch back to the table. No good. Well cooled, Mr. Watch. Yeah, but really he had plenty of room between that seven and the left-hand cushion. There was no excuses. He just had too much side spin on the cue ball. Another look at it here, Phil. He just caught it with a little too much right hand spin. And that looks to be a good containing shot from his partner. And it is. Yes, Vandenberg was tapping fine on the back before the cue ball had come to rest. Conventional <coughs> wisdom would be staying away from the tactical battles against the Philippines. Sometimes you just have to play the shots as they come, and obviously in that case, Niels had no option. Buying time, if nothing else, I guess, Phil, but they should find themselves in a little bit of trouble. And you know, looking at this, I'm just wondering whether Nick might not even try and bank that five into the top left corner, try and hold the cue ball down below the nine. The six is down that end of the table. No, it's just containment and not the best containing shot either. Can he get through to this? He was trying to get that cue ball behind the six. He doesn't like it. Well, he has to jump, but Nick knows well within the capability of Lee Van Corteza. Another chance for Holland. Yeah, he kind of threw the cue at this one. A lot of body movement and dipping of the shoulder. And there was a little movement in that long one that he missed as well a little earlier. So of the four players right now, the most vulnerable for me is Lee Van Corteza. That's unlucky. Boy, he got some he got some salsa into that cue ball, didn't he? shot from Nick Vandenberg. Makeable off that side cushion. The only thing that he's got to guard against here is the speed off the two cushions and back over for the seven to the same pocket. Oh, he's overcut it. 
Well, let me tell you, cushion first, playing that kind of shot, there's no one better than Dennis Ocullio on a normal basis. Oh, you can only think that he was so concerned with the positional end of it, Phil. But again, no clear-cut path. For Holland, even though this six is available, no positional value. Well, I say that, he tried to thump it in and get around the angles. Unreal, that six. Look at Dennis. Well, the, the scruffiest, the scrappiest rack of the entire day, maybe. But it counts just as much as the most clinical. Yeah, it really had more angle there than it looked. And I mean, every reason for Niels to take that on. And he would have expected to get that. And he certainly would have had position on the seven. But these little battles and mistakes mark them down when the overall tally is compiled. It never ever says how, just who. And when you make mistakes and win a rack, you forget them. But if you lose the rack, they dwell. Philippines back in front, 4-3. It wasn't the most convincing rack from their standpoint but they won't be concerned in the slightest. Welcome back to London and the your call for the final of the World Cup of Pool. The Philippines, having taken the opening two racks, were pegged back by the Dutch, who levelled and then went on to take the lead. But the Philippines turned things round in the seventh, regaining the lead. In the eighth, they pushed home their advantage with a relatively straightforward rack. In the ninth, the break was good. But when the Dutch finally got their chance, they played a loose shot on the two, which allowed the Philippines to extend their lead. This is now the tenth. Commentary comes from Jim Weich and Phil Yates. Now, is this one going to sit pretty for him? The one is, so is the two, so is the three. been a little susceptible to the pressure. Corteza. A little snatchy, that one, even. Yeah, and cue ball a little short. He's going to be a little careful. He's going to be bridging just over the eight with his hand, so... Six passes the seven into the corner. Jim is more a, a trademark rack from the Philippines. Much better, much more what we've been accustomed to. You know, form is temporary, but class is permanent, Phil. And this is a class pair. 7-3. <coughs> the beat goes on for the Philippines. 3-2 they trailed. They pick themselves up off the canvas and they've come back with a vengeance. And that was the last thing that Dutch fans and either Niels or Nick wanted to see was a break and run out and an easy break and run out. They're trying to stay positive. 
No head shaking. Just trying to wait. I mean, this is very similar to what we saw with the Philippines when they played Chinese Taipei, and at that point it was 7-2. They waited for the chance when it came. They played themselves right back into it, got back to 7-7 before the Philippines secured the last two, and that was in the semis. So Holland can draw some spirit from that. This is an illegal break and a chance at the one. Here's the chance for the Dutch. Yes, just to repeat this break rule, it's a combination of balls potted and balls across the head string. Has to equal three. Well, one ball was spotted, the eight. Nothing across the head string at all. Not even close to a legal break. Settle down then, please, nice and quiet. And what a chance now. Are we going to see another swing of the pendulum here, Phil? Because every chance this rack should go their way. Well, if they don't capitalize on this, it really is crisis time. That was a good shot. Pushing the five near the left-hand corner. He knew he was leaving his partner a nice angle on the three, but now from the four to the five, not nearly as tricky as it could have been. Good thinking there from Vandenberg. Niels and Nick put in a lot of time practicing. And it shows with how sound fundamentally they are. You watch that cue after it goes through the cue ball. Always on the intended line. Very little wavering. And all those sound fundamentals are geared to put you in good stead under pressure. Dennis is shaking his head. This is a familiar story. He's seen it before. Good shot from Vandenberg here again. This is the 31st match of the week, and so often the turning point in all of them has been something to do with the break, either positive or more likely negative. It was in the semi-finals between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. At 7-7, Chinese Taipei scratched. It was all she wrote. Is this going to be a pivotal point as well? Down it goes. That's a storyline that Holland Wants to see a little bit more of 7-4, they claw back. In the 12th, the break produced its own set of problems, most notably the lack of shot on the one. But when the opening did come, the Dutch looked to have blown it with a miss on the eight following poor position. The jump cue came out, but to no avail, the Dutch finished the job to keep their fight back on track. This is now the 13th. Survived the scare and break here in rack 13. And a very good break. A chance. Fair to say, Phil, it hasn't been pretty on either side. But it's certainly got a share of drama. The Philippines were 
slight favorite entering this final, given that we've got two players on paper, individually top five in the world. Yes, but you sense that if there was an intimidation factor, which I doubt anyway, but if there was, it's dwindling fast. Well, edge and experience with regards to team play would have fall to Holland. And given their Moscone Cup experience and the close bond between the two, you can see the four, the five just beside the nine. So, got to be a little careful here. I think he'll just, just pinch the pocket a little bit and use the nine to hold position from four to five. That's exactly what he's done. And he's got lots of angle. Looks like Nick can take the cue ball up table for the six next. Yeah, I don't think intimidation ever entered into the equation in this final, Phil, to be honest. This is all about looking after your own backyard. You worry about your game. I mean, that's the nature in any game of pool, in any sport, really. Never worry about what the other guy does. Yes, respect is healthy, but you don't want to feel second best. No reason for the Dutch to have that emotion. They trailed 3-1 at one stage. Pardon me, 2-1 at one stage, went ahead 3-2. And then the Philippines took over. And went 7-3 ahead. And Holland has won the last two racks and looking full value to make that three. certainly as they play themselves back into contention. And that's a little harder than Nick Vandenberg would have liked. You can see the grimace as he walks back, back to the chair and just quickly over to his partner's shoulder. Niels is gonna have to go around the angles now. Tension calls. If that cue ball would have traveled another couple inches, he wouldn't even be playing this into the corner. Just got to be careful. And he's leaving the longer nine. Good shot. Safe. Misjudge positional shot, the, the body language here, the wiping away of some dust on the table suggest he's a little nervous. Understandably so. But he struggles it in. Holland back within one, Jim. Welcome back to the World Cup of Pool. This is the final act being played out between the Philippines and Holland. The Philippines 7-3 ahead at one stage have allowed the Dutch back into this match. They've now leveled the score. In the 15th, the Dutch momentum looked to have stalled with a dry break, but the Philippines played a loose shot on the one. The Dutch, back to the table, look to have the rack at their mercy as they line up the four ball. That will do nicely. And all of a sudden, you just get the feeling that Holland is starting to fancy it. The balls are running their way. They're getting mistakes. And they're capitalizing. They 
have been in the ascendancy in this match before, but not since 3-2. From there, the Philippines won five straight racks. Now, though, Holland appear as though they're going to return the compliment. Fourteen to one outsiders before the tournament started. The Dutch. They certainly were due. Some applause when this nine goes down. In a cocoon of concentration, the Dutch are now in front. In the 16th, the break provided no shot on the two ball. The push out followed, and eventually the opportunity on the two ball put the Dutch in a strong position as they started to clear the table. Three remain for the Dutch to go to the hill. And they're going to have to remain composed. Vandenberg's head dropped there when he realized his positional shot wasn't quite spot on. It would be surprising if they had missed this eight ball, but it's not completely out of the question. Remember that. Remember that one. Pressure with a capital P. Is that the mistake that on, turns man. the World Cup of Pool back in favor of the Philippines? Maybe. The hook that the Philippines have been let off is the size of Bethnal Green itself. What a mistake from Niels Fyan. We're tied again, 8-8. Eight, eight. This eight will haunt Niels. If Holland doesn't win, the World Cup of Pool this year, that missed eight will haunt Niels for the rest of his life. It might anyway. Eight, eight. And now will he get another chance? Eight apiece in the race to 10. One four combination there waiting. And you know, that five ball when it went in, it was a delayed reaction, wasn't it, for a while? They thought it might be dry that break, the Filipinos. They were so relieved to see one ball go in. It made all the difference. A monumental swing. And you can bet they'll share in the blame should the Philippines go on to win. Still all to do. Team Philippines. They've been given the lifeline. Now it's down to them to put it to use. What we were saying before, Jim, they normally say when they've played superbly, we were lucky. In this instance, if they say it, it's true.
Tension cold. of a nation on the shoulders of these players. And unless you've represented your country, you can't possibly appreciate the pressure they're playing under. All week, Ted Lerner has been talking about these mythical pool gods. I've seen in the last few moments, I'm beginning to believe they exist. And the Philippines arrived to the hill first. 9-8. They will break for the title. One more break, one more run out, and the, the task is complete. And he has to believe that. Philippines to break. Regardless of the result here. You learn from your mistakes. Dry break. Isn't it just fitting? And in the fairness of sport, Phil, I think if this match went hill-hill, it would be a just result. And every chance. For Holland, the chance of redemption. House for world class players, world class tournament, possibly going to the wire. What more could you want? This is a good shot, too. Just wants that cue ball to bounce a little. He's got a little angle with which to work. The four on the right-hand side as well. He's just showing you where he can place the cue ball. There are a few players in this sport that have more cue power than Niels Fine. And he just cheated the pocket slightly, taking no chances at all. He snatched. It was as simple as that. He snatched at the pot. It was a technical deficiency. I didn't want the World Cup of Pool to be lost, Phil. I wanted it to be won. For the Philippines, Christmas has come three months early. Extension call. Or Colio 
And Levan <laughs> Corteza, they've seen it all before. They've been around pool their whole lives. They know what heartbreak is all about. And they've tasted victory before too. I must say, yeah, Nils Fine and Nick Vandenberg, both great lads. They've contributed so much to this tournament. And I'm sitting here feeling, feeling really sorry for them, but that's the, the nature of sport. That's the nature of the beast. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, Phil. And like you, terrific. Two finer gentlemen you'd never meet in the game. But this is all about the Philippines now. Dennis Orculio, Levan Corteza. idea why he's played that shot like that wow. look at look at Lee Van Cortez <laughs> he's he can't believe it I hate to say it, don't fancy him to get it settle down please I can't explain the way Dennis has played that shot Fragility there when it really mattered. The queuing held up. I had no faith. Dennis shook his hand and thanked him. Dennis Ercolio, Lee Van Corteza, come on down. It's your time. The 2013 World Cup of Pool Champions, the Philippines. The Philippines earn a record-breaking third title against a spirited Dutch team. Time to join our MC, John McDonald. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the gold medals for the winners and $60,000. But most important of all, the title of 888.com World Cup of Pool Champions 2013, Team Philippines! The Philippines duo of Dennis Ocolo and Lee Van Corteza enter the record books as the winners of the 888.com World Cup of Pool.